Here we go. I'm starting out with chicken in my mouth. Well, too. Hold on. <laughs> nice. Mm. I have Prince's uh, from Nashville. It's my favorite hot chicken place. What you got? So I have um, Nugs. Nice Nugs. Yeah. So um, everybody has seen these uh, these plant based chicken nuggets on Instagram ads. Yeah. Um, and my lovely girlfriend purchased a 50 pack shout out um <laughs> and they are real fucking good and i don't know if you can see this this looks like a mcdonald's chicken nugget it does um and so i'm eating this and this together dude i love texas pete it's one of my favorite hot sauces very very good combination it is uh up there i'm, I'm gonna have to try those too uh, i usually just get the is it corn like a q u o r n i get those a lot corn 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 the band corn all right man um so you get 30 seconds to tell me who your favorite artist is i'm gonna tell you to shut up okay you ready my favorite artist like art uh no 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 no, no. band or or you know solo artist whatever but oh i can do this no. my chemical romance is my favorite band yeah. uh, i have been listening to them since i was in sixth grade you're Russian. Uh, they are my <laughs> They've been my favorite band for my entire life. They will never not be my favorite band. Um, I like every song they've ever released, even wow. the bad ones. Um, they got me through a ton of shit when I was younger. Um, figured out that I wasn't straight by watching Gerard Way perform. Uh, <laughs> pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, I love them. I'm supposed to see them in September. Right, shut up. Man, dude, that's – wow. You covered a lot of ground there. Mm hmm uh, wait, you were supposed to see them in September? I am supposed to see them in September. I bought tickets. Um, so if we could wrap this pandemic thing up by then. Yeah. Be you know, everybody should just stay home so you can go see my kid. That's really how I feel about it, too. Mm -hmm. I agree. Man, ha have you ever seen them before? I have. I've seen them several times. Um, yeah. So I was lucky enough to see them through a couple different eras. Um but I saw the best one. I saw them uh, during the Black Parade era. So sick. And it was basically like being at a Broadway musical. Um, so awesome. They had like just incredible theatrics. There was like a blimp flying overhead inside the arena. Um, it was incredible. It was definitely, I saw them with uh, Say Anything also. That's, oh man. That's which was so amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it was a great show. That's my favorite one of all time, actually. Oh, your favorite show you've ever been to? Uh huh. Yeah, I don't. Oh well. Well, you saw your favorite band. It was your favorite show. Like mm -hmm. I saw, I saw Jimmy Eat World at the Ryman. Favorite show I've ever been to. Mm -hmm. It was so sick. But I kissed, I kissed an emo girl while I was there. It was just all around. I checked all the boxes. It was good. You, you, you have lived, man. <laughs> you have lived. Um, man, I'm trying to think of like when we met. It's been so. Do we meet? No, no, no. We we met at Lantern Fest. Mm -hmm. right okay and we we toured together i for some reason just right now i thought maybe the first time we met was when we toured together but nope we so, were pretty good friends for a hot minute mm -hmm. so we met in richmond at lantern fest and um a lot of people had told me that they're out of the very few bands kicking around doing the post-hardcore yeah um, like revival style of music like a lot of people said that my band and your band would get along really well um, yeah. and would fit really well together. So when yeah. I knew you guys were going to be at Lantern Fest, um, I wanted to to try to make that connection. And uh, and then I thought that you were a prick. Um, so, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, but no, yeah. And then we connected after that um, and just talked about doing a tour, and then we made it happen. So Dude, what uh, what was your what was your favorite memory? of of touring with me because i have a very specific thing to bring up with you and you're gonna laugh when i think about that tour i think about um when we were outside of spinelli's um okay. when nobody believed that i was really fast <laughs> uh, and so, I, so i raced so i raced everybody um and so that's what i think of like whenever and i guess because it was the last day of tour too it's like it always sticks really heavily in my mind and I also think yeah. about Matthew Penfound a lot. Oh my God. I love um, him. He, he, 
I, I just like maybe once a week I think like man I hope Matt Penfound's doing okay <laughs> like I love Dude, that guy he's, he's making that big money now shout yeah. out to uh, Matt I think he's doing uh lights for Switchfoot nowadays so yeah he was doing like three doors down yeah a second yeah I called him three doors daddy for the longest time mm-hmm. but uh you yeah tell me yours Nelly's. one of my favorite things you ever did on that tour was you did that like um like how hard you can punch machine and you like broke it <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> um, so the specific thing i was gonna bring up though was uh when when we were in new jersey and we played at that like brewery and mm-hmm. the like person that was supposed to pay us was being like real stingy with everything and like chris and Garrett were like trying to figure it out. And I think like Zeke was trying to figure it out. And you and I got like drunk at the bar and we we're just like, where's our money? <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, we're in like the whole night, we were just talking crap. And like, I don't know why, but I knew then I was like, we're going to be really good friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, I don't remember the resolution of that, but I'm pretty sure me and you solved it anyway. Like, yeah. everybody yeah. else was all upset, like running around trying to figure this stuff out. And me and you eventually just talked to the right person. He was like, yeah, here's your money and gave us yeah. like a couple hundred bucks or something. Man, people should just leave it to us to solve the world's problems. I, I, I'm pretty good at that. Um, <laughs> I also want to point out for those that aren't keeping track, what we've established is that I can run really fast and I can punch really hard. So keep all of that in mind. Just Optimal warrior. Oh uh-huh. my goodness, this is a perfect time for me to ask this. Okay. So like you who is your favorite character on Overwatch? Because how you just described yourself, you could be a character on a video game. One second. <laughs> and while you're going to get whatever it is, I'm gonna eat more chicken. Oh my, my favorite God. character on Overwatch. I love it. Is this very large fella right here? And so the special thing about this figure in particular. <laughs> is that this is the skin that I wear in game. So I have all of, this is Reinhardt, for those that don't know. He is a German crusader with a very large hammer. And um, I have all of his skins unlocked, but I only wear this one, okay? And he has this golden hammer, which is also an unlockable if you play a certain amount of competitive play. And I also, this is exactly what my in-game character looks like. And this figure was very limited at San Diego Comic-Con last year. And I, secured the bag you are such so. a nerd and i love it so i sure am um oh, man but yeah I, have, I think i have a lot of similarities with reinhardt um and that's part yeah, of the reason I'm a, yeah I, I you know i'm just i'm i'm attracted to reinhardt also because he um swings big hammer real hard <laughs> um and uh that that just that matches really well with how i want to be playing that game in particular too is just kind of whooping ass you know what I mean so so awesome I've been so because we're quarantined um, I actually played a lot of Overwatch last night and you know who I actually really like now I like Tracer a lot Mm -hmm. um it kind of took me a minute to like get the hang of it but I've been using Tracer and it's been cool so um I'm a decent DPS Uh, I'm a really good McCree I'm a really good May um I am a shit tier Tracer absolute poo poo tier and so if you are playing with me and I'm playing Tracer, what you'll see a lot is you'll see the icon in, on, the, on the kill feed of me killing myself because I <laughs> blinked off of the map because I can't control yeah. blinks very well. Yeah. So I'm like really bad. I'm very oh bad. That, that's like with me with, uh, I like refuse to play uh, Super Smash Brothers, um, uh, like Brawl or whatever, uh, because I'm so bad at it. I, I always fall off the map. It's not that I get killed. Mm-hmm. It's just like I can't stay on the map. Yep. But, um, yeah, we'll move on before we end up talking about video games. For a second. <laughs> but, dude, have you ever thought about, like, like if you could have a dream job, like, in the music industry, like, what would you do? Like, who would you work for? Um, yeah, that's a weird question. I don't know if I've ever even asked that. That's hard because I think I like performing the most. Yeah, yeah, same. But so, I don't know. I'm I'm good at, like... I'm good at like the management side of things as well. Yeah. Um, I've always done that for every band I've ever been in. And so I'm good at sort of not only booking tours and keeping everything organized and like seeing that through, but then also when we are touring, I'm the person that like has the like, in, even if it's just in my head, um, I have the itinerary for the day of like, what time do we need to wake up to get to where we're going? I'm ashamed. Um, 
So I think I would enjoy like TMing um, and, and like even selling merch. Like I have a lot of fun with that, that like nobody in my band ever wants to sell merch. Um, and I really enjoy it because I like meeting people. I like shooting the shit. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I like to travel too much to like, I guess, do a job in the music industry that involves not traveling. Um, so I guess like, I don't know, I've always really wanted to, so like a couple times in my life, I've either like tagged along for a couple days of like a bigger tour. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, even for just like a day, like showing up to visit a friend that's on a big tour. Um, something like that, I think would be really fun to do consistently. Yeah. Um, just that like, there's something really good about showing up and playing a show in a basement. Um, and setting up your merch in somebody's kitchen. Yeah. I like that, but I've also like, you know, I'm almost 30. Yeah. Like at some point I think it would be really fun to like whether I'm playing or not, do like a whole tour where everything everything is nice and organized. The Being sound good. is good every night. Yeah. I know I've got all the mics that I need. Um, you know, I've got a designated place for merch. Um, I've got food provided, you know. Um, so I think like doing TM slash merch for a band at that level would be really fun. And I definitely like, I think I could, I think I could do it with like enough experience. Cause I just, that's the way my brain works. Yeah. I, so I don't even know how I would answer this, my own question, you know, like I, I think I would want to like TM like a rap artist or something, something that's just so far from what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know, someone like Tyler, the creator or something would be so mm -hmm. much fun just to be around. But like, if you're like managing them, I feel like it would be a blast. I always, I always actually thought about like how fun it would be to play bass for a rapper, like yeah. for a live show. Yeah. Um, I think that would be a really cool, cool job. Or even like before, like when I was playing drums, like at a high level previously, um, before I abandoned that dream, um, I wanted, I kind of wanted to play for like, I don't know. Like I always think about like some of the older hip hop artists, especially that like had like a full band live show. Like yeah. that was amazing. So much fun. Man. Man. Oh, okay. So <laughs> well, what I was thinking of is like, you know, if you're managing like a, a, a rap artist, like, you know, a lot, a lot of time people get in, in those like, you know, like artist beefs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we've had our fair share of those. But uh, my, my favorite thing I think going on the internet right now is trapped, like getting into it with everybody. Uh -huh. And it really made me like start thinking about like band beefs and stuff over the years. And um, my question is like, what is your favorite band beef you've ever seen? Because if you remember this one, I loved watching like do you remember when a mirror and like the acacia strain had like a thing mm -hmm. I don't know if that was like a, a a public stunt or whatever but it was so funny watching all of that but I always love watching bands like fight especially if one of them's like huge and the other one's small but do you have a favorite band beef my favorite band beef that's tough um I will say that the first thing that popped into my head when when you mentioned band beef was and this is like a classic and I don't mean to like be a broken record but like back in the day My Chemical Romance and The Used had like yeah. a very public feud yeah um where they went from being like best friends to being absolute enemies and to <laughs> my understanding they literally just like reconciled that beef like this year or like last year isn't that um, crazy and that shit was nuts because like to me they were like especially like gerard way and burt mccracken they yeah. were like the top tier of like emo vocalists and so for them to be like best friends like they were inseparable to like all of a sudden they hated each other like i felt like i was involved in that it was like yeah, so serious yeah. for me in high school um so that one i would i don't know if i'd say that's my favorite because it sucked um because i never got to see the used and mcr tour together again yeah um but uh that's that's definitely what popped into my head when i thought of band beefs and then i mean honestly also i would say like bloom and idol threat uh, <laughs> is definitely my personal favorite um so you know sometimes my twitter fingers get itchy uh, <laughs> and i just log on to the bloom twitter and start talking shit um and you know, I just pick, I punch down like the easiest target. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, like that, that always makes me think of like if, if, if bands like got in beefs like that, if they ended up like, like physically fighting, what would happen? Um, 
and like uh <laughs> and well the question i'm gonna ask you is i guess i'm asking about bloom but if y'all had like a oh, what's it called a royal rumble like king of the hill type situation do you think you would come out on top oh dude yeah so really? uh, so like i said uh previously i don't know man logan's logan's pretty strong so okay logan is really strong but logan does not have the will to oh. fight like he really really doesn't he's such so, a sweet boy oh yeah dude okay i've seen logan angry like twice maybe. <laughs> like literally twice and like we've spent countless full 24 hour periods together um and i the only i've seen him angry so one time I crashed the van into a wall. Oh my God. Uh, in West Virginia during a snowstorm. And we got trapped at like a gas station um, in the middle of nowhere. And that, Logan was furious. He wasn't mad at me. He was just mad at the situation that yeah. like, we were supposed to be going to Louisville. We got stuck at this fucking gas station in the middle of a blizzard. So he was like pretty hot. But even then it was like, he was sitting somewhere in the gas station by himself, just like, <laughs> like taking deep breaths like he didn't really lash out at anybody so logan doesn't really get mad i think logan is strong as hell and it is really nice knowing that i always have logan on my team if i need him yeah um especially like you know like if you travel all over the place you can end up in some pretty sketchy situations um and so we definitely have and so like knowing that i've got logan because like garrett would sprint somewhere like he would just leave um he got them legs yeah, and so, like, having Logan, like, yeah, definitely – I think I would win. Let me answer the question by saying I think I would win because I don't think Logan's ever actually punched anybody before. Wow. Um, and, you know, I'm different. Like, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a mature – I'm a mature adult now, but when I was younger, I was a little fucking scrappy little punk. Um, <laughs> I honestly think – I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But if we're talking about, like, OG3, like, idle threat – I'm I'm kicking Zeke and Ernie's butts. Like oh, that's, no doubt. that's just no gonna doubt. happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And I have full, full confidence on that. If both of them watch this, I said it. Yeah, Whatever. no, and I fully I fully agree. But, I mean, I can't imagine I think Ernie might be a little scrappy low key, but like he, he he's got he he's got some uh some dog in him, but uh <laughs> we've wrestled before like as as a joke and stuff and like he he can't take this. But but <laughs> but I will say if if DJ, have you met DJ? If DJ yeah. was with us, if he counts in in like us fighting, he's he kicking all all of our butts. Yeah, he, he is a unit. Like he he's massive. I can see that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Like I I don't think I've fought since like high school, which obviously I'm an adult now. But yeah, you probably shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I definitely yeah. advise against it. Well, um, we'll be nice. But it's a nice but, skill to have if you need it. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, dude, if you could fight anybody in the world right now, who would it be? My dogs are barking. Um, probably Joe Biden. Um, really? Okay. <laughs> um, either Joe. No, you know, let me actually change that and say, um, I think that I would fight. <laughs> I don't, I want to get away from, from political candidates, but I really want to fight the rat boy. Um, Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing about about my problem with Pete Buttigieg is that boy is fake. Dog. He's <laughs> fake. He gives a bad name to all the queers, like like myself. Um, I I just I, I have a real particular thing about him, and there's just something about him that yeah, like I think I'm probably gonna get arrested. Like the FBI is gonna show up to my house for this video, but i'm not saying that i will fight pete Buttigieg. i'm saying you, i would you like just to. would yeah 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 yeah, yeah it's all cordial like it's yeah. just, you know you're gonna shake hands after and that's about it you know yeah, yeah. i wouldn't mind fighting like the the whoever it is on traps twitter like the singer whoever the fuck um hey, dude they they have like thousands of listeners yeah thousands of pandora monthly listeners dude he <laughs> Dude, back off, man. He'll <laughs> take you on. Gosh, I can't. I literally cannot believe that that, that has been a, a thing. Like, they, oh, I, I definitely can. I, I forgot definitely. about that band. Like, uh -huh. they, they were on, like, what? Like, a Tony Hawk pro skater game or something like that. They had that one song. And now they're trying to, like, roast all these bands. So, like, all of, basically all of DIYs, is like, roast us, roast us. Yeah, so, they're owning liberals, dude. So stupid. Pretty but, tight. I don't know. I don't know. I've, I we keep talking about like beef and stuff. I don't know. Like, uh, 
think of something meaningful. I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> is there anything positive in your life going on right now? <laughs> um, in my life. I have hot um, chicken and I'm talking to you. That's the highlight of, and I yeah. got to talk to some of my four-year-olds on a Zoom classroom thing. So but that's about it for me. I don't that's mean weird. to get, I don't mean to get like, I don't mean to get soft, but like, yeah. I think like this, the last like probably three months of my life were already really transformational. Yeah. Um, I was really like trying to figure out where I wanted to be and what I wanted to be doing and you know, what's important. And like, you know, a couple of things happened in my life that kind of shifted my course where I felt like I had everything together. My birthday is New Year's Eve. And so every year I have this opportunity to be like, it's my birthday. I'm turning out, you know, it's like what everybody does on New Year's, except it's my birthday. Yeah. So, so have you have like a double meeting of, you know, yeah. taking a new chapter or whatever. So yeah. Start, you know, starting something new. And so I, I looked back on last year and I was like, wow, like I did everything I wanted to do. I'm really putting together a life for myself here. And then, you know, I kind of wanted to carry that into this year. And then like two weeks into 2020, my grandpa died. Mm. And so that changed things. Like that really, that was like a shock to the system. Yeah. And so, um, and then this happened, you know, like I, once I started feeling like, okay, I might be making progress dealing with this, um, this happened. And so now I'm stuck at home um, with not much to do. And, um, yeah, it's really putting things into perspective and it's like reminding me of like, who's important in my life. And like, you know, that there are people all over that really care about me that I care about. Um, yeah, I don't know. And it, it's, it's, it's just changing my, my thoughts about things. I think that's really good. Like it, it, it's uncomfortable and, and painful a lot of days, but I think it's good. Um, yeah. because like, you know, I'm 29 um, and I don't think it's ever too late to, to continue shedding skin and, and, you know, making changes. And, um, so I'm trying to do that. Like I'm trying to find my, my place. And, and, you know, I think that this is giving me a lot of time to like, I don't know, think through that and work through that and figure out what matters to me. Um, so I think that's positive. And then, you know, also I, have had a lot of time to play video games. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I finished school in December. Um, yeah. Never had time to play video games as much as I want. And now I have time to play the literal hundred games that I haven't finished yet. So uh, I think for, that's a positive thing. For one of the psych classes I'm in, I actually just wrote a paper on like video game addiction. And it's really ironic because the past like three weeks I've been quarantined and like, Animal Crossing came out and like I've been playing like more video games than I have probably in the last five years you know mm -hmm. in the last three weeks so that's been weird but I don't know like kind of to reminisce on what you said like I, I really do think that we're gonna come out on the other side of this and everybody's gonna hopefully be like a better person you know it, you look at yourself and your neighbors and the people around you and like I, I don't know like I feel like maybe we're going to turn over a new leaf and there's, there's some positivity coming. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like if, if this doesn't make you like try to change who you are, then I don't know what will. Yeah. And, you're probably not savable. <laughs> yeah. And like, I just yeah. want to like go to shows again or like, you know, watch hockey with my friends and like, you know, if anything, I think it, it makes the, the most empathetic person even more empathetic. And then people oh, yeah. maybe weren't before, like they have yep. to stop and think and be like, wow, like, you know, the brevity of life is real. Like, we, yeah. we really need to take these things into consideration and, and just be a nice person. Like, yeah. that's it, man. Like, ah, uh, that's it. But um, we won't get too mushy because I could probably talk for hours about it. But <laughs> um, give, me, uh, give me your musical Mount Rushmore and we'll wrap it up. So give me four people that you would put on your uh, musical Mount Rushmore. Yeah, so... Um... Number one is really easy, uh, which, again, to be a broken record is Gerard Way. Love it. Knew um, it was coming. Definitely a transformational figure for me. Um, second is Freddie Mercury. In All right. A, a very, very similar way. Um, definitely um, one of the greatest, not only singers, but, but performers um, in history, especially in rock. Um, and I think created the pathway for everybody else that I like. Um, and uh, so, yeah, very important. Um, Max Bemis. 
of saying oh, anything. Okay. Um, and I love Max because um, so I've I've dealt with a lot of mental illness in my life, and he has an unbelievable ability to take mental illness mix it all together and turn it into something really beautiful and like productive. Um, and the way that, the way that he sings about, um, mental illness has been really important to me and he's like unashamed about being crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to dive back in to say anything then like, wow, that's cool. Okay. So like, and, and is, is a real boy is like very easily top three of all time for me. Um, just another really important record that like every song means a lot. Um, so yeah, he definitely cool. belongs in there. Um, and then last would be, uh, Jonathan Kirk, okay. uh, AKA the baby. <laughs> um, and you know, I don't really have, I don't really want to expand much more on that other than to say that, you know, the baby is, uh, the best. So <laughs> I, I am just floored. <laughs> oh my gosh. That, you know, Yours is the most unique <laughs> Mount Rushmore. That sounds right, yeah. <laughs> I love it. You you also are the only other person, uh, aside from me, that, that put a uh, rap artist on theirs. Um, well, and to be honest, like, like I thought a lot about who it would be, because there's like a ton. I mean, yeah. there are so many rappers that I, I could put in there. But I think baby belongs there for me because he brings me a joy that I need. Yeah. Um, that like when I need an injection of joy, I put on the baby, I dance a little bit in the car and I feel better. And that's just like a really, especially lately, like that's been a really important utility. Oh yeah. His music. So I, I think all music, sir, like I, at, at its forefront, everything is subjective, but I think, you know, as long as like someone can enjoy music, that's really what it's for anyway. Yep. Um, Oh my goodness. What's your favorite the baby song? Um, I would say pop star. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. That's hard to answer. Cause I like a lot of them, but I think that one, like I carry that song around a lot, just like singing along to it. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, that song just goes. Yeah. yeah. I, so he has that song, uh, vibes. I hate mm -hmm. that song. I hate mm -hmm. it. But I everything like else that I love, I've actually listened to at least like that, that like record in my car a few times, but I, I'd have to be cliche and say that bop is probably my favorite one. Yeah. And, and they're all good. I mean, it follows, a, it follows a formula, you know, he's got a, a similar formula for every song, but it for works. Sure. Um, so yeah, I like him a lot. It's not even deep. It's just, I just think yeah. he's really good. <laughs> yeah. It, like, okay. So like Kesha's earlier records for me, mm -hmm. absolutely love her. She's one of my favorite artists like of all time. Yep. And like, really it's just because it's like fun pop stuff. Like she didn't yep. care what anybody did. And then now later on into her career, she's writing way more meaningful like music and like, that's why I just like, I could talk about Kesha for hours, so I'm going to spare you and everybody. <laughs> but, I know um, you, I know you love Kesha. I do oh, I love her so much. <laughs> We'll we'll go ahead and wrap stuff up. So uh, I don't know, like what's what's going on with you, like musically. Do you have anything like fun that you can talk about, or? Yeah, I don't. So I don't really know how much I can say about either of the things that I'm doing. Okay. Um, but what I will say is that um, probably it's probably been six months or so now. Um, me and Logan um, and Alec Sloat from Heaven's Die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and our good buddy Bryce, who has sold merch on a couple of Bloom tours, I met uh, Bryce. Yeah, actually, what's really funny when I met Bryce, we were at uh, Princess together. That's with, right. Yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Boys, that's really funny. So the four of us, um, we did a cover set for our, our very good friend's wedding, um, cool. where we just like covered like pup songs and and um, diarrhea, like just like that. There's sort of like diarrhea planet vibes, like stuff like that. We just did shit like that, and so. Cool. Um, we um we really liked it and it was really fun so we started a band out of it um and it's called parmesan mayonnaise um <laughs> and it's essentially like um just a, a a whole bit like the whole band is a bit yeah um you know we are like harrisonburg's like top tier rock stars um and it's really fun and um so we actually recorded a, a record um feels like a while ago now um and that was supposed that's supposed to be out at some point. And what I will say in the is, quarantine, man, 
One, I, so I don't really know what's happening with it right now because of everything that's going on, but we were we were about prepared to release it. And what I will say is that Joe Macucci has heard this record. <laughs> he said, essentially, that it was his favorite thing that I've ever been a part of. Which that's so funny. Which was insulting, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Joe loved it. <clears throat> People really like it. Um, I think it's really stupid. Um, but it's really fun. And so we're going to have a, a, a record out at some point. Um, and then, yeah, so <laughs> B- Bloom, um, I don't know. We'll listen I, to Still a Wick. <laughs> yeah, like, like, honestly, like, I, I think we made a really cool record last year. You did. Um, and I still really like it, and I think that people should listen to it. Um, but what I will say is that once this quarantine thing is over, um, something new and bigger will be coming from us. Cool. Um, what I mean by us is really vague, um, but we have spent the better part of the last almost a year doing something else. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so I don't know, I don't want to take away any of the, the hoopla from when we eventually are able to drop this stuff the way we want to. Um, but things are different and things are really, really fun. And I'm extremely, extremely proud of the music that we have made um, that I'm currently sitting on. So yeah, I'm um, excited for it. So hope everybody uh, but I don't think I can say anything else about it. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, dude, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for coming on and talking to me. Yeah. Uh, always love seeing your face. I, I love seeing your face, buddy. Um, and, you know, now that we know we both have Zoom downloaded, we should just do uh, an, uh, an, a non-recorded interview every week to make, our, yeah. make us happy. Dude, I'm so down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm wrapping it up. Thank you. Hey, bud. I love you. <laughs> love you too, man. I love Joe Macucci too. I think I'm supposed to say that. <laughs>